Welcome back you guys, and let's talk about some of the NBA's biggest one-year wonders. Now pay attention, I did not say the biggest one-year wonders ever, I said some of the biggest one-year wonders. The list would be predictable if I included some of the more obvious players who had one big year then fell off. I wanted to talk about players I have not seen mentioned on YouTube that much. I am not saying all of these players completely fell off and became useless after their one breakout year, but they definitely did not follow up with the same type of production in the next year. So as always, subscribe if you have not subscribed yet to keep up with the NBA videos I will be putting out throughout the year, and let's go into the first player. Out of all the players on this list, Devin Harris arguably had the best overall career. He was the 5th pick of the 2005 draft, played big minutes in the 06 finals versus Miami, and right now is a backup point guard for the Mavs. But there was one year in Devin Harris's career that he played at an all-star level. At the 2008 trade deadline, he was traded to the Nets and put up 15 points per game, 6 assists, but it was the next season where Devin would play like an all-star. In the 08-09 season, Devin averaged 21 points per game, almost 7 assists, and was selected to the all-star game. Just check out Devin's numbers from the month of November in 2008. He was putting up 26 points, 6 assists on 48% shooting. Against the Pistons that year, he scored a career high 38 points. Then 11 games later, he broke his career high again and scored 47 points against Steve Nash and the Phoenix Suns. The trade for Harris was looking very good at the time, and a few weeks after that career high, Jason Kidd made his return to the city that he helped bring to the NBA Finals two years in a row. Not only did the Nets beat the Mavs by 20 points in that game, Devin Harris dominated Kidd in the point guard matchup. He scored 41 points and dished out 13 assists. And when Devin Harris checked out of the game with two minutes left, Nets fans chanted, Thank you Cuban. Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavs, who signed off on the trade, was sitting courtside in New Jersey that night. Nets fans thought they won the trade at the time, and it looked like Harris was their point guard for the foreseeable future. Harris was selected to the 09 All-Star game as a reserve. It was his first and only All-Star appearance. That was also the year Devin Harris hit this ridiculous shot to beat the Sixers. Even though the Nets missed the playoffs, it was a nice season for Harris, and maybe he could be the future point guard. But that season was the peak of the Devin Harris era in New Jersey. On the day of the 2009 NBA Draft, the Nets traded away Vince Carter, making Devin Harris the clear-cut best player of the team for the next season. But Harris was injured for the early part of the season, and the team started the year 0-18. If you remember, that was the year the Nets finished the season with 70 losses and just 12 wins, just a trash team. Devin dropped to 16 points per game in 2010, and then 15 per game in his last year with New Jersey, before being traded to Utah. He never matched those averages since that 09 season. He definitely had a respectable NBA career. Let's go into the second player. Next on the list, I have Aaron Brooks. He's in the NBA right now on the Timberwolves. He's played for a lot of teams. But do you guys remember when Aaron Brooks won most improved player and led the NBA in three-pointers made? This was back in the 2009 2010 season, Brooks' third year with the Houston Rockets. Back in the year the Lakers would repeat as champions, Aaron Brooks was putting up almost 20 points per game, 5 assists, and was hitting nearly 40% of his 3-point shots. He also won the league's most improved player award and made more 3-point shots than every other player in the league. Brooks also at the time became the 6th NBA player in history to make at least 200 three-pointers and dish out 400 assists in a season. Brooks scored his career-high 43 points that year, he cut down on his turnovers and was playing better point guard, and he improved his three-point shooting accuracy for a second straight season. There were signs that Brooks could become a good starter before his breakout season though. If you remember the year before that, Aaron Brooks had Lakers fans sweating in the 2009 conference semifinals. He scored 34 points in Game 4 to tie the series, and he scored 26 points in a Game 6 win to force a Game 7. And this was without Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming. That was a good series. 
So fast forward to the 2010-2011 season, Aaron suffered a sprained ankle and Houston traded him to the Phoenix Suns. He did not follow up with the numbers he had the year before when he was the most improved player. He dropped to 10 points per game and for the rest of his NBA career, he would not match that production. The next year during the NBA lockout, he signed with a team in China and then the next year he signed with the Kings. Right now he's a backup on Minnesota and he's only played in 7 games. But yeah, there was a year when Aaron Brooks was the most improved player and he led the NBA in 3 point shots. Let's go into the next player that is in the thumbnail on the video. Next on the list we have Larry Sanders, the 15th pick of the 2010 NBA Draft. In his first two years in Milwaukee, Larry was only averaging about 13 minutes per game and that was because of his extremely high foul rate. He was fouling way too much, plus his shot selection wasn't very good so the Bucks could not play him that often. But in the minutes he played and when he was playing well, one thing was clear, he had a huge impact on the Bucks defense. In the 2011-2012 season, Larry's second year, Milwaukee had a defensive rating of 102.4 and finished 17th overall in defensive rating, but in the minutes Larry played, Milwaukee's defensive rating was 92.4. They were allowing 10 points less per 100 possessions when he was on the court. When he was playing and did not get into foul trouble, the Bucks became one of the best defensive teams in the league and would turn into an average defense when he came off the court. If he could just stay out of foul trouble and take better shots, Larry was going to get more playing time and the next season, that is exactly what happened. Larry broke out in the 2012-2013 NBA season and quieted the criticism he got the year before. He started to cut his fouls, he was grabbing offensive and defensive rebounds more, and he was making teams pay at the rim if they tried to attack the paint. His numbers do not jump out at you. Sanders scored just 9 points per game and grabbed 9 rebounds a night, but just like the year before, whenever Larry hit the bench, Milwaukee's defense got a lot worse. He finished second in the league in blocks per game and was third in most improved player voting. Throughout that season, he showed off his dominant combination of rim protection and footwork against pick and rolls that got him a 4 year $44 million extension and at the time he was the future of the franchise, a 7 footer that could defend the rim, guard pick and rolls and finish at the rim. But that season was the only year he would put it all together. The next season in December 2013, he had to sit out 25 games because he injured his thumb in a nightclub incident and a few months later he was out for the rest of the season because of a fractured right orbital bone. Then two weeks after the news of his orbital bone injury, he was given a 5 game suspension for violating the NBA's drug policy after testing positive for marijuana. Now Larry was very aware that it is a banned substance in the NBA and he apologized to the fans for it, but marijuana use is something he felt very strongly about because of the medical effects. Larry is a big supporter of marijuana legalization and he said that there is just a stigma for it because it is illegal. The next year in December 2014, Larry was put on Milwaukee's inactive player list due to personal reasons and there were rumors he wanted to quit basketball. Two months later in February, the Bucks announced they were buying out Larry's contract and a couple days later, Larry shared a video of him saying that he was entering a program at a hospital for his anxiety and depression. Larry said that he still loves the game of basketball, but he said that the program at the hospital was where he wanted to devote his energy to and the NBA was consuming too much of his life. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys remember this, he tried to make an NBA comeback with the Cavs in March of this past year, they were hoping he was going to help their defensive problems, but he was only with Cleveland for a month, he was waived after only playing in 5 games. He apparently wasn't keeping up with the team tasks and they cut him after he missed a team bus trip to a game. And he has not gotten a look by a team since. Larry will be turning 30 years old soon and it doesn't look like he'll be back in the league anytime soon. Reading the interviews he has done, he seems to be at peace with everything. Let's go into the fourth player. Number 4 on the list we have Mike James, he definitely is one of the biggest NBA one year wonders ever. His career averages are 9 points per game, 2 rebounds and 3 assists. But at the age of 30, 
he came to the Raptors and averaged 20 points, three rebounds, five assists, and shot 44% from the three-point line. Mike played for 11 teams in his career and did not play for more than two on a single team. It seemed like everywhere he went, after two years, he was either traded or signed somewhere else in free agency. Once Chris Bosh went down with an injury after the All-Star break, Mike James was the only player on the Raptors roster that could really score. In the last month of the season, his averages were reaching all NBA level. James was putting up 27.5 points, 6 assists, 4 rebounds, and shot 50% from the 3 point line. He had a really good crossover that got him separation for a lot of his buckets. Then the next year he signed with the Wolves in free agency and his numbers came back down to earth. He was averaging 10 points per game and his shooting percentages went down. That one year in Toronto was his only amazing year as a point guard and after that he just bounced around the league as a journeyman. His last year was in Chicago in 2014 and I believe he played in Ice Cube's Big 3 League. Let's go into the last player on the list. The fifth and last player on this list I have is Bobby Simmons. He was drafted in the second round of the 2001 NBA Draft and he broke out in his fourth year in the league with the Clippers. Simmons averaged 16 points per game, almost 6 rebounds, and almost 3 assists. He shot 46% from the field and shot 43% at the 3 point line and won the NBA's Most Improved Player Award in 2005. The year before, he was putting up about 7 points per game on just 39% shooting, so this jump was pretty big for him. He was a 6 foot 7, 230 pound forward, and it looked like the Clippers finally had a player that they could get excited about. The Clippers, as you all know, were historically bad and were missing the playoffs every year, and maybe Bobby was somebody who could be a part of their future. But the next year, he decided to sign with the Bucks in free agency, and in the first year there, he struggled to build off the season before. His points per game dropped, and his shooting percentages dropped. Simmons stagnated as a player, and that first year with Milwaukee was his last year he'd ever put up 10 points per game. He was traded to New Jersey after two years in Milwaukee, and was mainly a role guy who would just shoot threes. His last year in the league was with the 2012 Clippers, and Simmons only played in 28 games. That was it for his NBA career. And that is it for NBA players who were one year wonders or had breakout years and then they dipped their production off the next season and then after that they could never match what they did in that one year. I hope the video was interesting to listen to. If you have any disagreements or you think I should have put another player on here, let me know. I hope the video was interesting to listen to. I'll see you guys in my next one.